Okay, let's try and simplify this for you. Uh, audio connectivity uh, is in the past, in the old days, used to be really, really complicated. But with the advent of like Blue Sound Node and music streamers and really simple, simple devices, uh, notice we don't have these banks and rows of interconnects. Uh, and so even my dedicated theater at home theater in my family room at my house, I basically have speaker wires to all my speakers. I have XLR connections from my preamp to my amp, and I've got two HDMI or three HDMI cables, one to the TV, and then one for the Blu-ray player that I never use, and one for the Apple TV that I use often. Uh, and so uh, interconnectivity has become really simple. So if we're talking about a, an audio setup, a two-channel setup for the garage, uh, it, it gets even simpler, uh, especially if we're not introducing video. Uh, and so these, these cables are our interconnects uh, between our either our preamp and our powered speakers or our source and our amplifier. Uh, and so I need a, a few different cables uh, in order to be able to provide you an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, but this video is just about the cables. It may not make quite as much sense, so you'll probably want to check out the specific videos on each specific product as you're putting together your system. I'm hoping to narrow it down and simplify it for you so you don't need to beat your head against the wall, especially if this is not your thing. Uh, this is my thing and I still have to think about it quite a bit. Uh, and, uh, and so I know many of you just want to be told you know, what to get. And so I'm going to kind of talk to you about all the different cables that we have here. And then uh, there's an HDMI video that's separate and there's a speaker wire video that's separate. But it's really pretty simple. We've got video cables, which is all HDMI. We've got audio interconnects, which connect source to source or amp to preamp. Uh, and then we have speaker wire for uh, certain applications where we have an amplifier that needs to get speaker signal to the speakers. So it's really just three different things, really quite simple. So here's what I have here. So I know this kind of looks may look daunting, but really I've got XLR cables for speakers like the LYDs and the cores that need XLR connections. So these are our studio monitors that we're taking and adapting. I've got optical cables, which is really for the digital space, uh, where if we have a pair of powered speakers like Dynaudio Zio or the Blue, uh, the PSB, um, the PSB AM5s, we're going to connect to a, a Blue Sound device. So that's really what what these are for. So we'll kind of put those there. Uh, and then I have some adapters. So I've got these sort of adapter cables that we have set up. So that's our, our you know, sort of the, the, the gist of our interconnects. So let's, let's explain this. So XLR, uh, if you look at the back of this speaker here, this is a Dynaudio LYD. And so this is an XLR connection. So let me open one of these up nice and neatly. XLR has three connections or three pins internally. The, I'm going to butcher this a bit, but the basic concept of XLR, of an XLR type connector, is that I'm able to send audio and let's say that there's noise that, that catches, like let's say there's some sort of transformer or something or some noise that's, that's interfering with the audio signal. The beauty of XLR is there are three pins. There's a ground or a shield, uh, and then there's a there's sort of an, uh, it's not a left and right, but let's say pin one and pin two. Uh, and so what happens with anything with an XLR connection, there's a bit of processing that can happen uh, where it's, or it's a simple filter. Uh, and so if there's noise that's introduced, because we have two cables that are running or two pins that are running that are virtually equal length, uh, it, uh, it affords the, you know, the, the, the crossover or the filter to filter out the noise. Uh, and so it's a, it's a superior connection from a noise perspective in comparison to a normal sort of RCA type type connection. The gist of it here is if you have, we have studio monitors in the garage, you need one of these cables. And so I'm going to be, I'm offering them in one meter, which is what you see here. So three feet, if we have a instance where we have a short setup, uh, three meter or three or one meter, two meter, uh, we're going to offer also a four and six meter in the in the Velux, you know, version. This is a Metro Velux cable, nice cable, not not ex not super expensive, not super cheap, just a decent middle of the road cable, which is what I find to be sufficient for even doing some high end Dynaudio cores. 
I've had to moderate on this in my life. You know, I've spent a lot of money and sold lots of fancy cables. Uh, and I'm telling you, um, you're going to have a really hard time hearing the difference, if any. Uh, and so I'm getting you what I think to be appropriate cables. Um, these are not high-end by any stretch of the imagination, but they're really nice. They're good. They're what we need for this. Uh, and with the, with the sort of demise of Monster Cable, um, this has become a, a, bit, a bit more complicated in trying to find you know, companies that provide us with a reasonable cable that we need for this application. These aren't, you know, the, like the Monoprice stuff we're doing, not my favorite cables, but uh, some of these are really, really hard to get. You know, some of these cables that we're doing, they're hard to find. Not, not many manufacturers make them. And so if you think about this, you know, logically, I need to get the audio from this to this. Uh, and in a studio monitor case, this is a preamp, and then the amplifier is in here, and so that's where the XLR cable comes in. Now, if we look at our Blue Sound node, the problem is there's nowhere to plug this thing in, and so that's where an adapter comes in. Uh, and so we need to convert RCA to XLR. The problem here is this renders the XLR pretty much useless. Um, so that thing I just told you about, where it you know is able to filter out the noise. Um, you lose that capability when we do this conversion, but I'm telling you, uh, this is this is not uh, this is this is. I think this is the way to go with any kind of studio monitor cable um, or any kind of studio monitor sp uh, speaker with uh, doing XLR cables. The Dynaudio cores don't have an RCA connection, so this is what we have to do. So just to keep it simple for your perspective, this is the connection that I want for my studio monitors. RCA connect to XLR into my speaker. Pick the length, done. So the magic of this system here, if we were doing studio monitors and we were doing a, uh, a blue sound setup with no subwoofer, I've got two of these RCA to XLRs, two XLR cables, plug all three into the wall. I've got a fully high res, amazing audio system. Doesn't get any simpler than that, does it? I mean, that's that's what we need. And so just pick your length, two meters. Uh, I will have a four meter and a six meter in this sort of higher end or mid quality. Um, um, they're coming. I had to order like 500 of each to get it here. But for the time being, and I, this is what I'm running in my garage next door um, with my you know twenty thousand dollar audio system. I know some of you are going to get a bent out of shape, but this is of Chinese, you know, or Vietnam-made monoprice. Uh, we have it in 25 feet and 35 feet. Um, I'm telling you, with XLR, it's, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but for my, and remember, I'm a crazy person, and I'm running really expensive speakers. And um, this is an analog signal, not a digital signal, so it's not ones and zeros. It's analog going from here to there. I've, you know, bought some fancy um, Amagami, you know, gold-plated blah blah blahs with silver wire running through it, and I hear zero difference. So, you know, I've had to relent on this. I would have sold you when I'm in my 20s. Absolutely, would have sold you the silver-plated, you know, $700 uh, XLR cables, but it just doesn't make sense because it doesn't really do. I don't want to say anything, but does very little, and so. Rather than me going to Audio Quest and getting you some really expensive, fancy stuff, I'm looking to solve the connectivity issue. And this is what I'm using in my garage. And so I think that this makes sense for, for us here. Even on a you know, $1,000 pair of speakers with a $600 streamer, um, I think that a, you know, a $50, $60 cable is what we need to get it done. Uh, so these, these work, they're function, I've tested them. Uh, so this is, this is what we need to do for this application. So if you were to go and get like the Dynaudio C685, the, you know, the $1,600 preamp and then connect to your studio monitors like what I have in, in HQ Garage here, um, then you could skip this adapter and just go right to, right to XLR. So what I'm hoping to do for you here is keep this simple um, so that way, you, you know, it's kind of like uh, the pressure washer system. It's still not... It's not, um, uh, it does, for some people, it doesn't make intuitive sense, uh, but at least we've narrowed it down. And these are the parts and pieces you need because there are thousands of different cables. Uh, and so I'm getting the, getting the ones I need. And of course, the guys that support Manny and the team support Obsessed Garage can help you uh, figure out what you need if we need it. So that's the XLR connection. 
um, the optical connection. So an optical cable uh, is what you would need if you, again, um, if we have a blue sound node and either PSB AM3, AM5s. So I need to run my optical out. So see this connection here, this little square box. Optical out to optical in on AM3s, AM5s, or Dynaudio Zeos. Uh, that's what this optical cable is for. Really simple. Otherwise, you don't need it. And Apple TV doesn't have optical. If you're doing your TV to a blue sound, um, you're going to use HDMI. We're going to use audio, the audio return channel. You're not going to use optical. You could, but you, you, we don't need to do that. So these, I'm doing um, uh, one meter, two meter. To, so we stock these. I can get them in longer lengths if you need to. Um, but this should be pretty simple. I'm going to put my blue sound node on top of my, uh, my, my AM5. And uh, that's what we need this cable for, for all of you that are going to buy those. That'll be... I think be our most popular system is our $600 pair of speakers, $600 streamer, $30 cable, and you've got yourself a fully self-contained amazing system. Uh, so that's what that's for. Last cable, so really I told you, pretty simple. Last cable is if you're going to do subwoofer, so if you're going to make a subwoofer connection. Uh, and so this would be if you're going to use a blue sound device, you're going to use one of the NAD uh, preamps or integrated amplifiers, or digital analog converters that we, we're selling. Uh, if you're going to do AM5s and you're going to go direct to a subwoofer, um, you're going to use this type of connection, uh, whether you're either going to do RCA uh, or you're going to do a Y adapter. <clears throat> because most of the time, we're going to run this wirelessly. Okay, So depending on the subwoofer you end up with, um, we may use the XLR cable, so we may use this converter, this, this RCA to XLR, or we may go XLR direct. So in the, in the garage, John's garage up in Atlanta, where I ran a hardwired connection, I actually ran an XLR from the, from the NAD preamp to the, to the subwoofer. Uh, in, the, um, uh, in my garage here, same thing, I've got a XLR cable running from the preamp direct to the subwoofer. Uh, but for most of you, what you're going to do, if we're doing a blue sound node, notice there's a black RCA subwoofer out here. Uh, we're probably going to do this wirelessly uh, because you may not have the ability to get the wire to your subwoofer. And so that's where the little OSD audio, uh, we'll have a separate, uh, a separate video on this. But the OSD receiver transmitter system uh, is, is what, you would, uh, what you would need to make this work. And so the best way to connect this, the transmitter, which is what you would put on top of your blue sound or behind your blue sound, the transmitter needs a Y adapter. So we have this mono price. It's actually pretty nice. Y adapter. You'd be surprised how hard it is to find companies that make Y adapters now. So I've had to go to Monoprice, set up a wholesale account, and buy these in bulk in order to be able to get this. And so I'd go subwoofer out into the left and right input. You don't need to do it this way. But I think this is the most efficient way to connect it. So I'm going to connect it like that. And then on my subwoofer end, I'm going to have uh, another one of these. I'm going to do it one of two ways. So depending on your subwoofer, let me pull this back off. If I have, my subwoofer has an XLR connection, usually the, the subwoofer side is not going to be a stereo connection. It's going to be a, a mono connection. Uh, and so if I have like a Dynaudio Core sub, it only has XLR. So I'm going to buy one of these adapters, this XLR, or RCA to XLR, on my receiver. So this, let's pretend this is my subwoofer and I'm going to plug it in, like so. So, and these also have a power, you know, power, AC to DC power that you need to, you need to plug in. Uh, and so then I could put my sub wherever the heck I want to do. If I had a, um, if I had like a Dynaudio Sub 6 uh, or one of the subwoofers that have a stereo input, I would run this Y adapter and then go like this, left and right. Uh, the other option is you could get, they usually don't sell RCA cables and, and singles anymore like they used to. Uh, and so buy yourself a, a little short little stereo uh, pair of RCA cables. So this is another option what I could do is run this mono. So I could take this RCA cable, I could just split this, 
run the white one, white to the black, and then I could do white to or red to red or whatever, just use the red cable to connect to the other end of the subwoofer if I was doing low frequency effect, the LFE connection. We'll talk about this more on subwoofers when we, when we get into it. And so uh, what I intend to do is we're gonna have a package. So if you buy the studio monitor package, there will be a subwoofer add-on and we'll get you the right cables that you would need depending on the subwoofer that you're buying. Um, but I did want to make you aware of what we have available to you here in the store. That we have XLR cables, we have optical cables, uh, we have Y adapters and then RCA to XLR adapters, which were the harder thing to find, uh, and then a short little RCA connection, uh, and that should solve any connectivity issue that we need for you know this studio monitor wireless audio and then passive speaker setup that we need, need in the garage. The other videos that I made, uh, on, I made a separate video on HDMI cables and then like I said, a separate video on speaker cables as well. So go check those out. But I hope I didn't confuse you more than when we started this video, but think XLRs for studio monitors and subwoofers, think uh, optical cable for if you're doing a node with a set of wireless speakers like AM5s or Dynodio Zeos and think uh, adapters for uh, for subwoofer connections uh, and for you know in some cases for studio monitors with the node. Again we'll make sure that we attach these to the products and explain what you need to get uh, when you're buying the stuff uh, but I did want to make a video on the speaker cables or the uh, the interconnect cables that we were we we're um, selling just so that we you know had this on the on each product page so thanks for watching hit us up support at obsessgarage.com if you're really confused uh, hit me up matt at obsessgarage.com and we'll make sure you get the right stuff it's really quite simple we'll help you get to uh, get your system connected and uh what i wanted to do was have speaker cables and have interconnect cables available to you so we can get you a, a solution from start to finish thanks for watching hope you support us obsessgarage.com is where we have all this stuff see you soon